Hello everyone, this is Britt Simon. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about the new healthcare requirement for the interview. Uh, this is something that um, the Trump administration introduced uh, about three weeks ago as I'm recording this video. Um, and it's a new requirement for all immigrants uh, that are coming to the USA. And um, there is uh, some detail on the Department of State website, which has just recently been published, um, talking about the proclamation that was made. Now, um, if you've seen my earlier video, which I produced, I think, the day after the, uh, the original proclamation that was made by Trump and his administration, um, you'll realize that um, the ways that you can qualify or, or meet the requirement are somewhat limited. Um, the government have provided a list of uh, insurance types which need to be uh, which need to be considered by the new uh, incoming uh, immigrant, and um, and mostly those are difficult or impossible or very expensive to uh, to to get, um, and so this is clearly a piece of legislation that is aimed against. Uh, immigrants from poorer countries um, and to an extent some people in the USA may agree with that sort of perspective uh, I don't and I should imagine a lot of the consular officers in uh, embassies around the world uh, will not agree with that perspective I don't believe that's what America is all about uh, I think they'll agree with me um, and nevertheless this proclamation has established a new standard or a new requirement that needs to be met by new immigrants, including diversity visa, visa lottery uh, immigrants. So um, this is really about getting through an interview. Um, it's about your ability to get approved during the interview. Um, and when this proclamation was first made, I was frankly shocked and um, dismayed because you know many immigrants are not going to be able to afford uh, the sort of costs of associated with plans like this. Um, but it's clear to me now, or it's more clear to me now, I would say, since the publishment of uh, of this particular um, document, there is this section at the bottom which I want to go over. This section here, which describes how the new proclamation or how the new requirement will be implemented during the during the interview, and because of that, um, I am going to make a suggestion about how cases and how applicants can process their cases uh, when they have interviews in November and December of this year because frankly at this point we don't have any solid information from the government and nobody has been through an interview under these new guidelines before and so at the moment we're guessing and uh, so what I want to do is give you the best preparation I can towards meeting the requirement. Um, and that's fundamentally what uh, what I'm I'm going to do. So this video has an accompanying um, uh, article that I've written on my blog. I want you to to watch the video and read the article, both things. I want you to go through the article um, because it's got some detail that I may uh, miss during the video. Um, also, the article itself can be translated into different languages by clicking this button. Uh, you can pick your language uh, that you prefer to read that in uh, by clicking that translate button. And so your understanding of what I'm telling you will be better if you read perhaps in your own language if you're not uh, comfortable with English. Um, but during this video, I'm also going to show you how to uh, get quotes and how to investigate the types of insurance policies that you will need um, uh, or at least that you will need to say that you will take uh, after arriving in the United States. Okay, so I'm going to go through the article and show you how to uh, how to prepare for an interview. And bear in mind, at the time I'm creating this video, uh, it's about one week before the new requirement kicks in. Um, information may change. This is a suggestion, uh, and you know you're free to handle this requirement any way you want. But I'm making a suggestion based on what I know is the normal sort of perspective of consular officers, um, and uh, hoping that uh, they are prepared to be reasonable about 
the way this is implemented. I, I'm sure, uh, I think the Trump administration, frankly, wants to be unreasonable, but I think consular officers will want to be reasonable. And so uh, I think we can sort of work in, in that way. All right, so let's go through the article. Um, uh, this will be a slightly long video. Uh, you'll need to spend a few minutes on this. If you have an interview in November or December of this year, 2019, I suggest you just sit down with a cup of tea or something and take some time to study this because uh, in theory, you could be denied your visa if you don't, uh, if you don't properly prepare for this. Okay, so um, I've covered that. It's going to be a long art article, and I've talked about the translate button, um, which is down here. Right, This is the translate button. I'm going to give you the link of this uh, article so that you'll be able to go through this. And, um, and, I, and as I say, I would like you to go through both, uh, you know, both the article and the video, uh, if possible, so that you can properly understand what I'm saying here. So, um, so here you go. Um, the first thing is the document I just showed you, the proclamation itself, which is here. Let me just open that up for you. The proclama proclamation, oh, okay, so it doesn't bring that up. Well done, Department of... Uh, DHS. Okay, so um, pres presidential proclamation. This is the wording of the proclamation itself that was made by the ca by the uh, um, the catastrophic administration we have um, <coughs> uh, in in place at the moment. Um, so uh, that's that's the information. Um, it applies. It firstly covers in this information on the travel.state.gov website, which is the Department of State. Uh, it covers who this applies to, and it applies to the majority of uh, immigrants uh, coming to the USA, um, and then talks about the plans that you would need and the requirement for the interview. Okay, so that's that. I'll come back to that in, in, a, in a little while. I have taken that requirement at visa interview uh, section of text and put it in here, and I want to focus on this. So let's just talk about that. Um, is it, let me, I'll read it firstly. During the visa interview, applicants should be able to demonstrate to the satisfaction of the consular officer that they have the financial resources to pay for reasonable, foreseeable medical costs or will have approved health insurance from the list above within 30 days of entry to the United States. Officers will review the medical and financial information that is already part of the applicant's case file and may request additional information or documentation as needed. Prior to the visa interview, applicants may wish to review costs and eligibility requirements for approved health insurance plans or consider how they would pay for the reasonable, reasonably foreseeable medical costs uh, of any current medical condition they may have. Okay, so let's talk about that um, that section for a start. So let's talk about the how they would pay for reasonably foreseeable medical costs of any current medical condition they may have. You you will probably not be able to guess if you don't already know. You won't be able to guess how expensive medical care is in the in the United States. Um, if you're uninsured and you go to a hospital uh, with, let's say, a relatively minor injury, let's say something like a broken leg, um, you can expect to pay twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars in medical fees for a reasonably simple uh, medical event. You might trip off a curb, walking down the street, you're going to trip over and maybe, you know, fracture your 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 leg. That's going to cost you twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars. If you think I'm uh, fooling around about this, you know, please don't. I'm absolutely serious. That's the sort of money that um, that things cost. More expensive uh, things like a stay in hospital, which would require you to be hospitalized overnight, let's say for a few nights, let's say something more serious. Uh, events like that, reasonably common events like that, can cost you know, well over $100,000. Uh, well over a hundred thousand um, dollars. My wife, just to give you a clue, my wife um, had a, a, a spell of vertigo, 
Um, vertigo is basically di dizziness, um, and it was serious dizziness. So we went to the uh, the hospital, um, and although I was covered by insurance, um, the uh, we were in hospital for around about three or four hours, and the overall bill for that uh, that was covered by insurance, but the the bill for that was twenty five thousand dollars. Okay, so one pill they gave my wife, uh, which was just a Valium, which is a treatment for uh, for the type of dizziness she had. One pill uh, was invoiced at twelve hundred dollars, one thousand two hundred dollars. Okay, so please don't fool around with the costs of medical care in the USA. You can't afford it. <laughs> Whoever you are, you can't afford to just pay out of pocket. So the idea that you can pay, that you can pay for the reasonably foreseeable medical costs of any current medical condition they may have, um, you know, that is a big, big ask. Now, if you've got something like asthma and you need relatively simple, you know, um, uh, treatment, maybe that will cost you only a few hundred dollars or uh, a few thousand dollars to see uh, to see a doctor and be prescribed the, the medicines that you need. But again, these are not trivial costs, okay? So, uh, let's, so let's assume you can't, uh, you can't show that you have the money to pay for all these medical costs. The other option is that you have to say that uh, you will, within 30 days of entry to the United States, uh, it, it, uh, have an insurance policy of the type that they describe. It's the type that they describe in this list. Okay, so um, you have a 30-day period. That essentially means at the interview, I believe what they're going to do, and this is just my assumption at the moment, is they're going to uh, look at your financial documents, which would be your uh, bank statements, etc., or your I-134, if you've decided to go down that path. They'll look at whatever financial uh, backing you have. The cash you have now, or the support that you've got from a, from a person in the United States who has signed an I-134. They'll look at that and say, okay, this person uh, is likely to be covered, um, but do they understand? The question mark in the consular officer will be, does the applicant sitting in front of me truly understand the level of expense that they will have to pay for health insurance in this country, even if you have insurance? Now, we'll look at this later, but for a small family, um, who are getting a normal healthcare policy in the USA, uh, costs can easily be a well over $1,000 per month for a health insurance plan that would cover them in a very basic way. Okay, So, um, you know, you have to understand that even the health insurance, never mind a health incident, but the health insurance itself is expensive. So um, I'm going to show you two ways that you can get, get a quote. Um, for the health insurance for your particular circumstances so that you will be able to look the officer in the eye and say, yes, I understand how much it's going to cost and here's my plan to do that. And one one um, quote I'm going to suggest you get is this one, the uh, health plan offered in the individual market within the state. I'll show you how to get that. Um, and the other type of plan is uh, essentially this one, a visitor health insurance plan uh, Bear in mind, this is a health insurance plan. This is not a travel insurance policy from your own country. This is an American introduced, an American policy um, for a visitor health insurance plan with adequate medical coverage for a minimum of 364 days. In other words, one year. Uh, you know, they want you to have this for one year at least or until the beginning of a planned extended travel outside the United States. So if your plan is to come to the USA for, let's say, a one-month visit as, a, as an initial trip to sort of have a look around, figure out where you're going to live, and then your plan is to go back to your home country, spend a, a few months there just closing up the house, selling, the, selling your property or whatever you're, you're planning to do, and then you're coming back for a second trip, Excuse me. <coughs> your your um, your period of coverage could be less than one year. It would be until the end of that first trip into the USA. Okay, so the what we so, sometimes call the activation trip. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to get a quote for that sort of policy and for this sort of policy within this video. Um, the 
this visitor health insurance is actually very similar to this sort of policy. I don't know why they've differentiated between the two of those, frankly. But the other the other plans that um, that are listed here are really not available to you. Uh, for example, coverage by a family member's health plan. Um, uh, people who've got a USA uh, a health policy uh, can cover their own children up to 26 years old. But other than that, they can't include family members, let's say an uncle or an aunt or a, uh, or a brother or sister or whatever. They can't uh, include those family members on their health policy. They would have to get another health policy. Um, so, uh, you know, being covered on a family member's health plan is... Um, unlikely for most DV lottery uh, entrants, and for many of the um, many of the people going through uh, this process. If you are going through a family-based um, a family-based uh, immigration case, and you are under 26, and your family do have uh, a, a medical plan already, a healthcare plan, then yes, perhaps you can be included on their plan, and you should get details about that, and you should provide details at your interview um, to the CO if needed. <coughs> excuse me, I'm struggling with a cough at the moment, so excuse me coughing through this video. Okay, so um, so anyway, so I've I've explained what I'm going to show you in the in the video. Um, all right, so my my plan is uh, to explain to you that you've got uh, a couple of options. Um, so if you're interviewing in November or December 2019, here are your options fundamentally. Option A would be to ignore the new requirement and hope that the COs have not been told to permanently refuse a case with no healthcare insurance plan, okay? So uh, I don't know whether they are or aren't going to treat this like some other um, uh, refusals that are temporary refusals. A temporary refusal um, is sometimes categorized as AP, uh, Administrative Processing, or a 221G uh, refusal and that sort of refusal is a temporary refusal meaning you have time to go away and provide documentation uh, at a later date to the consular officer and if you provide information that the consular officer um, uh, wanted and uh, requested and uh, is satisfied with that then perhaps you could have your uh, your application approved at a later date so uh, if you go with option A, you are hoping that you get put onto AP and that your uh, only type of refusal is a temporary refusal. Um, and uh, the, 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 um, uh, the, the I, I personally wouldn't go with this sort of hope. I mean, uh, my own reaction would be, no, I would want to over-prepare and I would want to be prepared to meet the requirement during the interview to simplify the whole thing. If you go on to AP, and sometimes it's unavoidable because maybe they want to do background checks that you have no control over, um, but if you go into AP, you, your case is somewhat at risk uh, more than other cases. Uh, and, you know, I don't, I would not advise people to, uh, if they can avoid it, take any action which causes them to go on to AP. Okay, so, um, you know, it's up to you. Uh, if you want to go in there and hope that everything will be okay, that's your choice. Um, <coughs> but as I said, I would not do that. Um, so, uh, if you were to do that, I think it's essential that you have uh, built your case at least to show that you've got it ad adequate cash savings or an I-134 um, and I have a document, I have a, an article about that, uh, I'll open that here. This, uh, this article describes what an I-134 is, uh, which is essentially an affidavit of support uh, from, uh, from someone who already lives in the USA. Um, you can show savings, you need to show something around $10,000, perhaps more now with this new requirement per adult. So let's say $25,000 in cash for a family of four. Or if you don't have that sort of savings yourselves, um, you can get an affidavit of support from a family member or a friend. Uh, the affidavit of support is filled out on a form I-134. 
and um, it's a promise, although not legally um, uh, enforceable, but it is a promise from someone in America that they're going to take care of you and offer you some sort of help. And uh, as long as they have um, filled in the form and as long as they meet the requirements, which is an income requirement on their part, um, then the CEO could judge, yes, you, you can use this person to support you. Uh, and it removes the concern about uh, public be becoming a public charge, which is uh, essentially what this, this rule is about. Okay, so you can have a read of this uh, this um, article here. Uh, that's basically, I think it's essential that you at least understand you've got to provide that that sort of information if you're going to go with option A of just hoping that everything will be okay. Option B <coughs> is more what I would do. It's um, prepare thoroughly. Uh, so that you can demonstrate that you understand the new requirement and have a solid plan to get healthcare insurance within 30 days of entering the USA. Um, so your financials are still going to be important. You still need to show that you can meet the financial requirements. Um, but in addition, I'm suggesting that you would have some quotes available to you for uh, for a couple of types of health insurance plans and that you can look the CEO in the eye and say, look, I've prepared for this interview. I understand my obligation to get health insurance when I arrive in the USA. Here's how I'm going to afford it. Here are the costs that uh, that I that I know I'm going to incur, um, and I'm fully prepared to do that if and when I arrive in the USA. Okay, so they are uh, essentially going to judge you on a trust basis, or and uh, and whether you seem prepared or not. If they say to you during the interview, and you haven't prepared, if they say to you during the interview, hey, well, did you know that it's going to cost you $1,000 you know, per month or $2,000 per month for health care insurance in the USA? And if you look with a surprised face and say, no, I didn't know it was going to be that expensive, then you are putting your case at risk. That's my simple point. You are, you, it, by lack of preparation, you are showing and demonstrating to the consular officer that you have no idea about the costs of healthcare insurance. And so my option B is about preparing uh, and so that when that question is asked or if that question is quietly asked in a way, you know, not so clearly, but, you know, just assumed, um, you can show that you have done your homework, that you understand the costs, that you have a plan, um, and and the CEO hopefully will take that as an understanding, and um, and will tick the box that says you have met the requirement. And that's all I'm all I'm hoping. So this is not about pulling the wool over the officer's eyes. This is not about lying to the officer or anything else like that. But it's about uh, going through uh, a process to make sure you understand uh, what's going to be needed. Okay, so let's now talk about the quotes that I that I would suggest you get, and I suggest you print out. Um, so uh, there are essentially two types of insurance policies that I would suggest you get quotes for. Um, one is uh, from the healthcare government. If I go back to that proclamation here. It's this, un unsubsidized health plans offered in the individual market within a state. So the way you get to that, the way you get a quote for that is you go to this website here. I'll open this up, this link up and we'll go through a quick process. And for, <coughs> excuse me, for both types, of poli uh, both types of plans, we'll assume that you're a, uh, a small family, a uh, husband and spouse, husband and wife, uh, and one child, let's say an eight-year-old child. Okay, so we'll run through this process for uh, assuming that. But if you ha are a single person, then obviously you would, you adapt this uh, quotation process to a single person. If you've got more kids, you adapt it that way. And when you've produced your quotes, they will show actual quotes, real actual quotes, that you could go and obtain a plan um, you know, for the amount of costs we're talking about. So, firstly, we'll go to the healthcare.gov uh, site, and secondly, we'll use the uh, visitor uh, healthcare type of plan. Okay, so first one, then we'll go to healthcare.gov. <coughs> Again, I apologise for my coughing. Okay, so this is the link that that um, that, that uh, link on my website has opened up. 
So um, it's this time of year is when a lot of people are signing up for insurance for 2020. So um, right now there's a, a nice uh, way of going through this sort of preview plans and prices and that's essentially what I want you to do. So we'll go through this process. I'm going to click on the preview plans and prices. You have to provide a zip code. Now my zip code is in California. California is one of the most expensive places to live. Um, so I'm going to put in a zip code here. Um, which I know to be in Miami, uh, in Florida, which is less expensive. Florida is generally less expensive to live in than California, particularly the area I live in, which is Northern California, just outside San, San Francisco. Um, I live very near to companies like Google, like Facebook, like you know, all the technology companies in, a, in an area called Silicon Valley. And there's loads of money around here. The, the housing is expensive, cost of living is expensive. And so, you know, I, I think the healthcare policies for this area would be more expensive. So let's look at Florida. We're going we're gonna to pretend in this case we're going to be in Florida. <coughs> so uh, we've, we've searched our zip code. Now we've got to start some information about the house code, uh, the, the household. So I don't have a previous plan idea, so we can skip that. Um, we're going to say it's for me and other people. If you were single, you would just say just you. Okay, Who's in your household? Just you or you and other people. Yes, yeah, so in my case, I'm going to pretend like I'm uh, you know, husband, wife and one child, as I mentioned before. I'm going to say yes, I'm, I'm married. Okay, uh, I'm going to say, do I uh, claim any dependence on your federal tax return? Dependence in this case is not counting yourself and not a spouse. Um, so this is not myself or my wife. This is I'm going to say whoops. I'm going to say yes. Uh, I've got one dependent, right? One child, in other words. The age of that dependent I'm going to say is eight years old. We'll say it's a male. And um, and I'm uh, actually I should not click that. Okay. So. Um, this is about you. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. This is going to be about me. So uh, tell us about you. Age 35. I'm just going to assume 35, male. I'm a legal parent, uh, parent or guardian of a child under 19. I'm going to assume that uh, and click continue. Uh, my spouse, I'm going to say, is 32 years old, female, legal parent or guardian, and I'm going to continue. Dependent one would be the child. We'll say an eight-year-old male child and don't click that but click this none of these okay um, if you're pregnant by the way if your spouse is pregnant do click that button but we you know we don't do any paperwork for for babies until they're born um, but it's not a bad idea to click the button to say you're pregnant uh, if you are pregnant there's no harm in that there's no you're not going to be discriminated against for being pregnant in any way but um, but it would be worth clicking that if you are if you know you're pregnant right now okay so then this is my household members right so myself age 35 my spouse age 32 and an eight-year-old child that's you know a typical fairly typical family unit okay um, so now I'm going to estimate the income now there's an important point here in order to avoid getting a subsidy and I have to avoid getting a subsidy because it says here unsubsidized health plans um, I need to put into this box a pretty high level of income um, and I've, I'm going to put in here $200,000 a year. The reason I'm doing that is if I put in a lower level of income, let's say $30,000, $40,000, the system might, might say, oh, well, you're entitled to some sort of um, discount. And if you come here and you want to get a discounted plan or a subsidized plan, uh, you know, when you come here, that would be okay. But as far as the interviewer is concerned, you need to demonstrate the cost of an unsubsidized plan. That's exactly what it says on that proclamation. Okay, so in order to do that, we're going to put in 200000 and the system therefore will say that I am not eligible for a premium tax credit because I said my uh, income was 200000 Okay, in Florida that would be um, that would be a lot of uh, a lot of income in in Florida. That's four what, four thousand uh, four thousand dollars a week. Uh, that's quite a lot for Florida. Actually, believe it or not, in California where I live, 
I, I mean, I wouldn't say it's nothing. I mean, it's not nothing, but it's not a lot either. Um, you know, the average income here will be well over a hundred thousand dollars in in my area, uh, and jobs that pay two hundred thousand dollars a year are not that hard to find in 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 uh, at least in my profession, which is uh, IT technology. Okay, so um, so anyway, I filled the system into saying premium tax credit. I'm going to view. Uh, there's no no eligibility for premium tax credit. I'm going to view the full full price plans. <coughs> so I can close this next box and just say next. I can close this next box and say next. These numbers here are not my policy uh, prices, um, and here are the policy prices that um, that have been uh, suggested. So the least expensive policy that's being suggested here for a bronze level. Uh, bronze level plan, which is there are there are different levels of plan, and the plan the the higher the level, uh, the lower the deductible, etc., and the lower out of pocket maximum. Um, so by uh, by choosing the most uh, the least expensive plan, I could choose one that was eight hundred and fifteen dollars per month. Okay, so if you were trying to show to the um, to the uh, consular officer that you understood the cost of healthcare insurance, it would be good for you to say, okay, um, uh, get a quote on this particular plan, um, and let's say we choose another one as well, 833, 847. Those are, uh, you know, you could choose any of those and print out the details for those, right? So you can either print out um, this this page here you could do a screenshot and uh and you can say okay here's what i plan to play i'm, go I'm going to take a screenshot like that and i'm going to print that out to a printer and i'm going to say well i understand that's going to be the sort of cost right um you could yeah this is a for a small family just husband wife and uh one child um you could see other sorts of plans so for example if i wanted to go for a more expensive plan. Let's say I look at these plans, apply the filters. Um, that that is a gold plan. So the deductible is only two and a half thousand, as opposed to eleven thousand um, dollars. The deductible is the amount of money um, uh, that you pay before the before the plan starts to pay. So in other words, uh, if you have to use this insurance, you will pay the first two and a half thousand. Of this particular policy, but you don't pay the money after that. So if you've broken your leg and you've got a uh, an event that's going to cost you twenty five thousand dollars, you're only going to pay the first two and a half thousand, and for the family as a total, you're only going to pay eleven thousand eight hundred. I'm saying only, like it's a casual amount. I'm sure these numbers probably seem insane in some parts of Africa, um, and this is for a more expensive policy. And don't forget, when I had uh, when I had less expensive policies. The deductible is eleven thousand. So, in other words, the eleven thousand here is the the amount you pay for covered services before the plan starts to pay. So, uh, so yeah, don't don't think these things are cheap. Um, you are going to pay. Uh, you, you you pay. There's different sort of. Again, this is a a low cost insurance plan. So it's saying here, for example, 50% coinsurance after deductible. So you pay the first 11,000. So you've gone in and, and had a serious accident. You're going to be in the hospital for a few days. You will be re responsible for paying $11,000 first of all, and then 50% of the costs after the deductible. So if that's a $100,000 event, and it's very, very quick to get to $100,000, you'll pay the first $11,000, and for the next ninety thousand dollars, you'll pay forty-five thousand dollars. So you would only pay fifty-five thousand dollars. Of course, that's enough to, to wipe out uh, a new immigrant's um, savings, most likely. But that's what they think is an only number, right? So, if you were actually taking this insurance, I wouldn't recommend that you went for a bronze plan unless you absolutely have to reduce the cost. Um, so, but just so that you understand, those are the, the levels of cost that you you would expect to pay for this insurance. Okay, so that's how you can get a quote. Um, you could probably do that, get plan details. You could print out this particular page. 
Uh, and if, if you do that, you're really showing to a consular officer that you have understood what the plan is going to cost. Um, and, you know, and, and he'll say to you, OK, can, can you show me that you can afford $815 per month? And uh, although in the proclamation it doesn't mention a full year of coverage here, but it does on these other plans, <clears throat> Um, you can assume that the CEO is going to expect you to show that you can pay uh, that sort of money, the, the $800, for a few months, let's say three, four, five months. Okay, So they'll be assuming or expecting you to show that you've got, let's say, $5,000 in a bank account somewhere. And if you haven't got that, uh, it's purely to pay for this insurance, never mind all the other costs. But if you haven't got that particular money, um, then you probably need to show that you've got an I-134 from an American um, American resident and taxpayer um, who is going to help you with these sort of costs. Okay, so um, so this is what you would do: print this information out. You can look at this if you like and just um, figure out all of the costs for medical care so that you understand what's going to happen. Uh, it's it's very complicated. I have to tell you, um, health insurance is a complicated choice in the USA it's really quite bewildering if you don't know what you're doing um, so uh, you know spend some time looking at this but please don't ask me a lot of questions about um, you know these healthcare policies uh, you know it's it, it's something you need to do when you're here uh, and when you can sort of understand all these things that uh, that you're taking on okay Right, so that's one way of getting the uh, the quote. What we've done there is we've got a quote from healthcare.gov. Now, I'm going to assume that you're probably saying at this point, oh my gosh, how am I going to afford $800 per month? It's impossible, right? And I've said here that this is the most expensive option. Um, if you're living here, you are expected to get one of these ACA plans, by the way, um, and normally you can get that through your employer. If you get that sort of plan through your employer, the plans will be better, better than the ones that I just showed you there, and your employer will pay some of that cost for you. So, for example, uh, my own plan uh, for insurance is better than any of the ones that you could have found on, on that website. Um, it uh, it covers me. Uh, I my um, my expenses that my deductible is is very low. I pay thirty dollars each time I see a doctor. I pay a minimal amount of money for uh, prescriptions and that sort of thing. Um, it's quite affordable from the point of view of when I use it. But that plan costs my uh, me and my employer between us about two thousand dollars per month to cover me myself, uh, myself, my spouse, and my daughter. Um, so that's about two thousand dollars a month. Of that two thousand dollars, I pay, um, I think it's three or four hundred dollars. Um, so, and my employer pays the rest. So, if you can get a job that offers health care as uh, a benefit, um, it will be you'll get, as I mentioned, better plans, and it'll be a less expensive cost. But still, it's not trivial. Okay, so then let's talk about the visitors' health care plan. So. I, um, I'm going to show you this article quickly. I have, uh, some time ago, established an affiliation with a, co with a company <coughs> um, to, uh, to, that provides short-term visitors coverage uh, for people arriving in the USA, either new immigrants or um, people that are going to be here visiting for sort of longish periods of time. So on my website, for some time, you've had the ability, uh, if you wanted to, uh, to click on this link uh, or click on this picture, and uh, and there is a picture here too. And those links take you to the same place. You can read about that if you like on that article. I'll put that article in the um, in the description below as well. But um, you can use my affiliate link um, to access that uh, those websites. Okay, so that's just like clicking on one of the um, one of the two places I just um, I showed you actually I just want to show you a quick sort of disclaimer point I am an affiliate of those uh, of that insurance company so if you choose a plan if you were to choose a plan when you arrive in the USA 
uh, and and you you buy you know one month two months of insurance or something I get a very small commission a couple of dollars uh, is very small but um, but it goes towards the expenses of running the site so uh, but I just want to let you know that I I do have an interest if you like in that so uh, just so you, you're aware okay so I'm going to go to that website again and we're going to start the process of getting a quote from that website which is for a different type of insurance I actually did start one here before I'm gonna make this uh, I'm gonna make this a little bit different I started a quote earlier <coughs> how do I delete that uh, let's take that one out and we'll make this an H old okay so this now is the same type of uh, coverage and what I've done is I've said I'm traveling to the USA these are the options traveling to the USA or I could say already in the USA either of those from December 1 2019 to November 29th 2020 okay so that's a 365 day period of coverage there this is a one year insurance quote so whereas the other quote that I just showed you that was eight hundred and fifteen dollars that was for one month so in other words for a year it would be about ten thousand dollars these quotes I'm about to show you are less than that but this is a different different type of insurance this is sort of uh, you know it's covering the, the the risks it's covering you from very expensive um, uh, happenings healthcare events etc but it's really not as good if you like as the full fully blown healthcare insurance plans that you really should have uh, if you live in the USA but this is a good uh, bridging option <coughs> so if you arrive here for a period of time before you get a job this is a good way to get insurance um, for a month two months three months those periods of time okay oh, my phone is charged lovely okay so let me get the quotes now um, we'll go through this this uh, process and it's going to find the plan so I'll show you I should probably have shown you how you um, how you set that up but here are the sort of plans now this is a 365 day policy that's covering a husband a wife and uh, a child but these coverage limits are much less than the coverage limits that you would have on the other policies the deductibles are less too these are not the sort of the eleven thousand dollar things but these are uh, limited coverage plans they don't they cover for big events right um, you wouldn't generally use these for small small events but you can you can do but if you're going to go on to a regular um, sort of healthcare insurance policy where you go and see your GP regularly for checkups and that sort of thing this is not that sort of plan but uh, you need the other sort of plan for that but this at least will mean that if you have some big event that you have some sort of health insurance that's going to cover you so <coughs> you can go through the options here yourself but some of these for example are better than others it says some are limited and some are comprehensive limited ones are going to be the, the least expensive um, but I would recommend that you go for a comprehensive plan um, and uh, and so they are going to be you know something like fifteen hundred seventeen hundred dollars for a whole year now that's only a hundred or you know perhaps a hundred and fifty dollars per month compared to a to an ACA plan that's very inexpensive um, but as I say there's not quite the same level of insurance coverage um, but these you know these are reasonable options um, at least for a temporary period of time the coverage limit you may choose to up that I personally would certainly up that I wouldn't go with fifty thousand dollars um, and as you increase the coverage limit you'll see the price will increase the deductible goes the opposite way if you increase the deductible that means you're going to you're going to pay more of the cost uh, yourself uh, before you start claiming insurance and so that means it, it drops down somewhat uh, the price but um, bear in mind that what we're doing here is we're getting a quote to show a, a consular officer you don't have to choose one of these policies and you wouldn't take a, a 12 month policy anyway when you arrive that would be nuts uh, because you're probably going to um, get a job and hopefully get some health insurance uh, with that job so you would take a month or two and perhaps extend it month to month and uh, while well, you need that sort of coverage um, but then get on to a, a proper healthcare insurance policy when you can 
Um, so uh, just so we can have a look here, you can click this link here and it tells you um, some of the uh, some of the exceptions here. This is an interesting one. Not available if your country is Nigeria or Antarctica. Uh, I don't know what they've got against Antarctica, but um, the concern about Nigeria is one of fraud. And you can see um, you can see for some of these policies, they have several of the countries in that region identified as um, uh, you know not available for citizens of the, these countries. So they're saying, okay, if you come from one of these countries, we don't want to provide. Uh, we don't want to provide insurance to you. So, um, why is that? Well, they're concerned about, about fraud, right? So, um, if you are from one of those countries, perhaps uh, take one of these plans, this STU-CS, Safe Travels USA. Um, that's only restricted, in, uh, you know, in terms of an Antarctica or Nigeria. Um, it provides a PPO plan, and there's a list of doctors and hospitals that you can um, that you can um, have a look at. Uh, let's see if we can have a look there. Let's go into this. I'll, I'll do this. It says, um, by the way, it says if you go to urgent care, uh, you can, you know, you pay thirty dollars. That's pretty good. Um, coverage duration options between five days and two years. That's all fine. Um, so here's how you can see where the hospitals are. So you say Vitus in the USA. Oops, yeah, lots of messages there. Anyway, so um, it has a way of clicking through a number of links to just check what policy, what uh, providers there are in a given area. I did this earlier in my own zip code, and I found a very pretty good um, selection of doctors and also. Um, doctors and um, and options. Uh, I have to take that out. Doctor, doctors and options um, within a 25-30 mile radius. It was actually pretty good. Um, pretty good there. So uh, let, let's um, let's go back in, in there. We'll check on this. Where did I get that to? Here. Yeah. So in this. No. In that box. Yeah. We'll go three three one three three. We'll say within 25 miles of that, um, and let's say we want to find a hospital within 25 mile radius of Miami. So we'll load those. If I said all providers, I'd get um, I'd get more than that. Uh, I'd get doctors and pediatricians and you name it. But this is uh, 33133 is is an area in central Miami. Uh, it's actually close to this Coral Gables. Um, so these hospitals are some of the best hospitals in Miami. I used to live there. I know this area pretty well. Um, these are all reputable um, hospitals. Um, and so I can I can see that this particular plan is giving you access to pretty good hospitals. And what it's saying is that these hospitals accept this insurance. Um, so that's a fairly reassuring um, result to be able to find that. And you could find a, uh, a, a general practitioner through this same thing if you wanted to see a GP for some reason. But this, as I say, is more about sort of urgent care or you know larger events, larger healthcare events, uh, as opposed to uh, regular um, you know regular uh, things going on that you know uh, month to month checkups or year to year checkups. Um, if you're pregnant, by the way. Uh, and you're expecting to have a baby, I've, I very much suggest you just get an ACA plan because uh, you don't want to go through pregnancy and not have insurance. Um, you know, a delivery, a, just a regular normal delivery will cost around about twenty to $25,000. Um, so you want to have health insurance for that. Um, and if the delivery gets complicated for any reason, it'll be much more expensive than, than that. Okay, so um, I hope that's that's making sense. So uh, we've gone through how you would get the two quotes. Okay, so I'm saying that you go through, get the quotes, print out some information from the quote process. That so you print out the dollar amounts and you print out some of the some of the stuff, and you get some paperwork that shows that you've done some of your own homework. And if you're going to say that you're going to show them the healthcare.gov quotes, then you better have enough money to cover that. 
If, on the other hand, you've got less uh, money in the bank, etc., or you uh, or you think that your sponsor isn't very wealthy, um, then I would suggest that you should be able to get away with um, you know this sort of policy, the less less expensive sort of policy, but showing a year's worth of coverage. And as I've mentioned, I'm not suggesting that you have to insure, you have to purchase this insurance plan prior to the interview. Okay, um, I'm assuming that the CEOs are going to uh, look at your preparation, look you in the eye, see that you understand the costs, see that you have some uh, support, uh, financial support or cash savings, and based on those things is going to say, yes, you are prepared for uh, your move to the USA. That's my, that's my hope and understanding at this point. Okay. Um, and as I mentioned, you certainly should have uh, insurance when you come to the USA, but you can get that later. Um, please read the information about the uh, about the uh, health insurance plans in general. I think that's an important topic you should know about. Um, please making sure that you're as well as watching this video, you've gone through this uh, this article. I've put the link at the bottom of the video, um, and you'll be able to switch backwards and forwards between the two uh, the two things, the video and this this document. And this this document, this article in my blog has all the links that you need to uh, to get your quotes etc and to understand about the new requirement okay so um, I hope that's been helpful for you I know this has been a long video and I apologize for that um, but this is an important topic um, and hopefully after we get some feedback from people that go through the interview process in November and December we'll understand whether this uh, strategy um, is working uh, and you know how that worked out for people I, and I, I'm sorry I can't offer something more concrete than that uh, for people going through interviews in November but this is the best that we can do um, with the understanding that this policy is going to start in a week's time doesn't look like it's going to be challenged um, successfully uh, through the law courts. so at least for the time being it looks like it is going to go into force um, and in that case, you, you would better be pre prepared for that. Okay? All right. I hope that's, uh, that's been helpful for you. Uh, if you do like this sort of information, this is specifically for people going through the uh, DV Lottery 2020 uh, process right now. Um, but as you'll see on my, uh, on my channel, I provide information about uh, the DV Lottery this year and next year's lottery entering the DV 2021 lottery. Um, and uh, it's my aim to help people through the process which I went through myself uh, and uh, and I now live happily uh, in California and uh, I'm enjoying the uh, the lifestyle and the weather and the uh, you know the whole thing of the American dream um, so you know this is my way of giving back and I hope this has been useful to you um, if you like this video please click the like button below uh, subscribe to my channel to make sure you get updates like this uh, and other updates as I get more information uh, and uh, and by all means leave me a comment I'd be very happy to, to read what you're you're saying I'm struggling with answering some of the com comments at the moment in YouTube I do answer questions um, all the questions I see on my website I answer every one of them um, uh, one way or the other, um, I answer those, and um, because I'm focused on answering those, I've got less time to answer the YouTube comments and questions, so if you want a question answered, other than just making a comment, please go over to my uh, blog uh, website and uh, leave a question there. Okay, thank you very much for listening and, uh, and watching, and have a great day.